OK, this is how I start the DCSF-16 Viper. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the electrical power to the jet. I'm going to use right click twice to get this switch up into main power. Now what we can do, we can call up our radio menu and ask our ground crew to rearm and refuel the jet. I'm already happy with this loadout. I'm going to make a note of our gross weight here, 31,500 pounds. We need that to work out our takeoff speed. So 32,500, close enough, 170, we'll use afterburner, rotate 15 knots less. My rotate speed is 155. Okay, now the next thing's to start the engine. I'm going to close the canopy because it gets pretty noisy pretty quickly. So this little switch down here on the left side wall, we're going to left click on that. We're going to hold it until the canopy is fully closed. And when it stops making noise, then we can left click on the spider here to lock the canopy. Nothing above me, so if I need to punch out, I can. I'm going to arm the ejection seat. Alright, next we're going to start the engine. Important pre-checks for this, engine feed in norm, in DCS it always is, in other sims it might not be, so get in the habit of checking it. We're going to make sure our physical throttle is in the idle cutoff. Once we run up the APU, we're going to see the RPMs come up. When the sec light goes out, we're going to move our throttle into the idle position. So let's get the APU running. Jet fuel starter, left click once on to start to. So that's starting the APU and then it'll start spooling the engine. RPM's alive. We're looking for the sec light to go out. RPM's 20%. Sec light's out. Throttle into the idle detent. RPM's coming up. Turbine inlet temperature's coming up. We want to make sure that's not exceeding 900. About 870 is normal with the conditions in this mission and that's dropping back down after reaching 870 so that's all good hydraulic and oil pressure lights out engine fault light out sec light out so we have an engine all right to get the jet started up fully we're going to do a left to right sweep through the cockpit on the far left we've got the flickers panel we're going to do the flickers bit left click on that one the bit is running We'll come back and check this later. If we've got a red caption down there, a red fault, there's something wrong with the jet. It's going to move all of the flight control surfaces just to make sure everything's working okay. Moving on, the next panel, our IFF panel. We're going to move the master to norm. This allows us to use the bird slices to interrogate the IFF of aircraft in front of us. Our lights. We're going to turn wing and tail, fuselage on, and we're in norm. I've got no faults on the electrical power. If you've got an electrical fault, uh, you can often clear it by pressing the electrical system fault reset white circle there. Flicker spits off, no faults. If I had an ECM pod, I'd switch this to standby. I don't, so we're leaving it alone. I like my threat volume down a bit and my missile volume down a lot. I'm going to turn our radio into both. Threat warning OGS panel. Left click on the bottom right button. Turns on the RWR. Countermeasures panel. We're going to turn that into standby. We're going to connect the RWR. If we had a jamming pod, we'd connect the jammer. And we're going to arm up chaff and flare. We're still in standby. Landing lights already in taxi the wheel brakes park brake on at this point we could get rid of the chocks if they were fitted moving up and around we're going to turn on the heads up display get some symbology in there which won't happen because firstly I have to turn on all my avionics so 
first thing make sure air source is in norm in DCS it always is in other sims it'll be off if you leave it off and start turning things on you can fry the electronics of the jet left and right hard point we don't have anything on the left and right hard point that would be our targeting pod our harm targeting system we're not carrying that we're not going to worry about it fire control radar on radar altitude two clicks into on I like my DED data in the HUD if you prefer to use the DED data display that's all up to you displays the same information just in a different place now oxygen got flow all good we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on all of these switches this is turning on all of our avionics the INS rotary here we're going to right click once to get it into stored heading as you can see the INS is now doing its align okay while we're waiting for that to align let's get the Hemix set up so I'm going to turn that all the way on and I've got the Hemix now we're going to go to the list button we are going to go zero for MISC we are going to go RCL for Hemix Hemix display I'm going to hit sequence on the dobber HMCS align if we're cold starting the jet we always have to align the hammocks otherwise the symbology won't line up with the outside world I'm going to use M select to get the course align started I'm going to line up these crosses as best I can and then I'm going to hold the cursor enable on the throttle align OK M select to accept that azimuth and elevation M select to start I'm going to line those up as best I can using the cursor and then M select to accept roll M select to start it and I'm just going to use left and right on my cursor to make sure that's perfectly aligned M select to save it return okay at this point we can set up our radios 305 is what we usually use on most of the servers because most people don't bother changing it com2 144 devil dogs com2 144 okay I've got a flashing a line if I go list and go 6 for INS I've got a flashing ready the INS is good to go I'm going to right click twice on the INS knob and get it into nab and return okay now let's get back to where we left off I've got radar on the left I've got HSD on the right and my stores management system this is a time where if you want to have your HSD when you're in dogfight mode you can just select a blank slot there select the HSD and it's there you can switch between it and if you come back into dogfight mode later on it'll be there same with air to ground or air to air if you want for example with your air to ground if you want the weapon which is used for the maverick the targeting pod the HSD is already there actually or the FLIR anything like that we can add these pages in now and so we can switch between them when we're in flight and we don't have to worry about it then let's look at the central instrument cluster and make sure everything's set up there we will click this little switch to turn our altimeter into the electrical setting we can use this knob here to change our pressure setting if we want to set for example our airfield elevation or our Q&H for the local area that's how we set it there if we have a specific departure heading we want uh, like say 060 I will use the heading knob on the left to select that outbound heading that way I can set my autopilot in roll heading select so if I'm on climb want to hit the autopilot in I'll just hit this pitch switch left click on it down into attitude hold and it'll actually steer to center that little bug there so that's very cool check our fuel internal tanks are good wing tanks are good external wing tanks we don't have any external centerline 
we've got fuel. Now, since I've just checked that we don't have external wing tanks, we're not carrying external air to ground ordnance. I uh, check stores config cat one. If you've got those big wing tanks on, or you've got bombs on the wings, you want cat three. It doesn't stop you over Ging the stores, ripping them off the jet, but it will stop you from getting into an unrecoverable spin by limiting the angle of attack you can pull. I'm just going to get rid of the Hemix display by DMS aft long. Okay, we need to set our standby artificial horizon, make sure it's level. Now, AOA is level, VVI is level, horizons level, ball centered. We've got our standby compass here. Make sure that's matching up with the compass in your HSI here and the heading in your tape there. We've got no caution lights. I've got everything set up how I like it. We're ready to taxi. So, wheel brakes on. Hold the ARNWS switch on the stick. Get nose wheel steering in. As soon as you throttle up, parking brakes will come off and you're ready to taxi.